Hello everyone, my name is Mumbo and welcome to the Minecraft Live Creator Pre-Show. I definitely could have done that better. Be honest, that was a little bit pants, wasn't it? It should definitely help the situation. A little bit of redstone lamp action and of course a tiny bit of TNT, why not? And now that I'm fully prepared, I want to welcome you to the Minecraft Live Creator Pre-Show 2021. Absolutely glorious. This first little batch of videos are all linked by the way they take the game and create a challenge for themselves and their friends. Hey everyone, my name is PathRHD and today we're going to be playing Minecraft with not only one mice, but two. This is not going to end well. But hey, that's what makes it fun, right? Let's show everyone how it rolls. So our main mice, this bad boy right here, is going to be controlling where we look. So up, down, left, right. Um, if we want to mine certain blocks, we can do that. Everything that our normal mice usually does. How am I going to move forward? How am I going to move backwards? How am I going to open up my inventory? Well, that's why we have the second mice. This button right here, we move forward. Simple. This button right here, we move backwards. Easy. And of course, we got to open up an inventory. It wouldn't be Minecraft without an inventory. So this button right here, voila, opens up our inventory. And I could say that this is actually doable. This is playable, you know, just in case you broke your keyboard and if you have two mice laying around, give us a shot at home. I actually recommend it. There we go. Let's see if we can craft ourselves a sword real quick. And hey, we definitely want to slay that piggy. <laughs> okay. All right. This looks very weird, but trust me, this is way easier than you think. Okay. Oh, oh okay. <sighs> this is not bad. Get the sword. Easy. There we go. Now we use our other mouse. You know, we got some buttons on the side right here not bad this feels very weird poor piggy poor piggy poor piggy rest in peace piggy but there we go as simple as that give this a try at home let me know how it goes and yeah this was actually a blast <laughs> Hey friends, Mac and Cheese Fleece here. Today we're playing more illegal Minecraft. We'll be digging straight down, but Drew, we're gonna do it with a twist. But two and Drayler made this awesome mod where XP morphs us into random mods. As always, we're gonna have a death counter. Ooh, so here is a dig down spot. Breaking uh, the law, I this breaking side. the law. You're picking that side? Okay, I love orange. So I'll start okay. here. And go! Okay, go, go, go. Oh, okay. Are we just okay. going as fast as Ooh, okay. Oh. I got some I got some coals and some XP. I can't wait to see what I turn into. I know, me too. What do you think you're going to be? What do you think you're going to be? Oh, I'll I bet. don't know because we can be anything in Minecraft. I'll bet. Oh, oh help me. Oh, help me. I? Help me. I? Oh, my gosh. You're a help hotline. Me. Get Get me out out here. Here. Oh, I got out. Are you good? I'm okay. good. You're oh, shivery. you're a zombie. Run, I'm a zombie. Run. Oh, yeah. you're a zombie. <laughs> Get me out of I this won. place. Goodness, there's also there's more. Ah, why am I on fire? Ooh, oh, oh, oh sunshine. Sun. Yeah, sunshine. Uh -oh, You're gonna get get uh -oh, out of there. Get uh -oh, out of there. Come uh -oh, on, come uh -oh, on. Oh, I gotta go deeper. Holy smoke! Oh, what look, Mac. Do? Look, look, look down. Whoa! Yeah, look, amethyst. look, look. Amethyst. Ah. Wow, this place is so pretty. Hold on, hold on. I, I gotta get down oh, there because wait, I'm a pig, right? You have to dig four down. <laughs> look at this area. Oh yeah, my look gosh. at all this amethyst. There's so much. There is. Okay, okay, okay. Those don't give us XP, so we gotta keep digging down because only when our XP bar fills do we get to morph. Oh okay. my uh, gosh, look here. at you. <laughs> this might be enough. This might be enough. Come on, hold, morph, please. Morph, morph. Hold. Oh, I morphed. I morphed. Oh, you're a oh. husk. We're kind of like best friends right now. Yeah, yeah, we are best friends. Hey best there, best friends. Friend. Hey, best hey friends. Hey there. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm just excited that I no longer have to dig four blocks. Oh, I have a I lot know. more coal. You I might morph again. You have so much more on your side. I want yeah. some. Oh, yeah, yeah. Share the some, wealth, man. Yeah, Share sure, the wealth. Sure. <laughs> yeah, take, take some. Let's let's see what you become. Oh, I'm about to morph. I know okay, it. One okay, more. Okay, okay. Maybe. Oh! oh! What am I? What am I? Oh, Wait. You're a turtle. A little guy. turtle, hey there, <laughs> little buddy. Oh my goodness! Oh no, I'm four blocks now. Oh, are you? You're a, you're yeah. a four. Yeah. Okay, a four we need blocker. some XP. We we gotta get out of this four block love. Oh, there, there's a bunch of coal down below where you were digging. Oh, there is. Okay, okay let me, let I me, didn't. Let me see let me it. help let me help you, little turtle. Help me help let me, me. Let me help you out, little turtle friend. 
Wait, I morphed again. What oh, am I? <gasps> oh, you're a little, oh, little silverfish. Silver oh, oh my god. Look gosh. at you. You're wiggling your booty. I'm boom, literally boom, boom, boom. so small. Yeah, like literally one block. Boy. <laughs> That's so cute. All right, I'm trying. We're morphing. Oh, what did I get? What did I get? Oh, you're a stray. I'm a stray. Am I, whoop, I'm still whoop, a little whoop. silverfish guy. I'm so small. Oh, you got some good stuff coming, man. I do? Yep. Oh, diamonds. Diamonds. Ah. Oh. Ooh, oh. I advanced. <gasps> hey, I'm a trader. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Okay, trader. I'm tall now. I wanted to be tall, and now I am, okay. so this is great. I'm going to morph soon. Oh, oh. oh I'm a vex. <gasps> Can you fly? I can fly! Whoa! Oh, the rules uh -oh. we have to dig straight down, isn't it? We have to dig straight down. I'm okay, in big okay. trouble. No! That's I can fly it. out. I can fly out. Oh, that's <laughs> not fair. Alright, dig it yeah. down. Oh, oh no! Ripperoni! Yeah, kitty cat. Meow, meow. Oh, you're so cute. Thank you all so much for joining us for more Minecraft. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, bye. Olá pessoal, eu sou o Jazz Ghost, youtuber brasileiro de Minecraft E agora vocês vão assistir a troca de construção O minigame que consiste em você ter apenas um minuto para começar uma ideia de construção Acabou o um minuto, você é obrigado a sair do seu lote e ir para a construção do youtuber vizinho Você deve continuar a construção dele, mas sem saber qual era a ideia original que ele tinha para a construção Todos os youtubers continuarão as construções de todos os youtubers e no final nós vamos Vamos comparar a ideia original de construção de cada youtuber com o resultado final todo bagunçado. Galera, a parada é o seguinte. Para começar, como vocês podem ver, a gente tem dois box, o de cima e o de baixo. Então, primeiramente, vocês vão vir aqui no box de cima e vão fazer mais ou menos como vocês gostariam que fosse o resultado final da construção de vocês. Fizeram suas construções? Uhum. Sim, sim, fizemos. Então, a parada agora é o seguinte. Vai cada um para o seu box de baixo. Vocês terão um minuto para começar a construção com tanto aqui no meu celular, quando o alarme apitar, parou de construir e você vai para o lote à direita no seu caso, Cherry, você vem aqui pro meu, beleza? 3, 2, 1 começou, pode construir um minuto nessa bolega velha oh, minha construção ficou bacana, hein, galera minha construção ficou bacana mano, 30 segundos já mano, isso aqui vai dar muito errado, isso aqui vai dar muito errado. gente, 20 oh, segundos ah não, pera aí, é sério 20 segundos, pelo menos marcar nossa senhora, nossa não, vai dar muito errado Errado, velho. Não vai pitar. Não, 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 não. Vai pitar. Não, 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 não. Não vai dar, não. Parou, galera. Parou. Ok, então agora todo mundo vai para a sua direita, tirando a Cherry, que vem pro lado de cá. Você vai pra lá, Pacão. Mas ficou um bloco errado. Não dá pra tirar, não? Hum, eu posso tirar pra você. Pera aí. O que, que é isso aqui, mano? Ah, Cherry, aí... Vamos não, lá. Não, Cherry, aí dá... Ai... O que, que é? 3, 2, 1... Valendo, continua a construção do amiguinho, galera. Nossa, talvez eu consiga salvar a construção da Cherry, mano, porque eu entendi isso. Por incrível que pareça, que possa ser isso, por causa do bloco. Spock, o que, que você que tentou que fazer? Não, não pode falar, é secreto, segredo. Gostão. Uma dica do seu. <risos> não posso, eu não posso falar qual que é a ideia da minha construção. Então a Cherry de verdade. A Cherry tá de brincadeira, não é possível. Vamos lá, galera. 20 é. segundos. Como assim 20 segundos? Tá acabando já, já tá acabando já. Ah, ele tá de brincadeira. Tá 10 segundos, 10 segundos. 7, 5, 4, 3. Não vai dar, não. Nossa, quis fazer nada do Spock. Acabou, acabou. Parou, parou, parou. Tempo finalizado. Vamos para a sala à direita. Eu entro aqui agora na sala vermelha. Que que é isso? Nossa, mano. Ah, não, isso daqui, ah, isso daqui eu já sei o que, que é. Isso que tá torto, queria falar nada. Não, oh, mas isso aqui vocês já acabaram. Tá, vai. 3, 2, 1, continuou. Não, ô, oh, Jazz, desculpa, mano. Já trollaram já, velho. Os seus já trollaram, não tem como. Eu nem passei pelo do Jazz ainda, mano. Se trollou, foi a Cherry. Não, não trollei nada, não. Não, é que foi, foi a Cherry, né? A, a, a... Nossa, velho. Pedrinho, vão acabar com essa construção. Você é o vermelho, não é? Qual é, mané? Qual é? Não Nossa, brinca, que não. eu faço. 20 segundos. Não. Ah, Wanda, não. Vai, 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 vai. Mano, é muito, muito complicado. Construir achando. Alguma... Cinco segundos. Três, dois, um. Tempo encerrado. Agora a gente vai fazer a última troca de salas. Para é o seguinte, galera. Última troca de salas. A ideia é 
ideia é terminar a construção mesmo agora, do, de todo mundo, sacou? E aí a gente vai fazer um comparativo entre a ideia original e o que, que isso aqui se tornou. 3, 2, 1, bora! Mano, vocês já acabaram esse aqui. É a tia dando meu. O que, que vocês fizeram, mano? Ah, não, velho. <risos> se a tia falou que tá fofa, é que mudou seu projeto, né? Nossa, Galera, é pra acabar agora, tá? O da tia eu acho que vai ficar o mais próximo. Ah, isso que dizer. Eu acho, eu acho, tia Rafa. Vamos lá, gente. Os 30 segundos finais. O que construiu uma guerreira? Gente, 20 segundos. Mano, que guerreira, velho? Que guerreira? <risos> <risos> ah, não, mano. Galera, 10 segundos finais. Vou botar só mais um tica tica aqui pra terminar. Galera, 2, 1, acabou. E assim, todos os participantes passaram por todas as construções e fizeram a sua contribuição. Agora vem a melhor parte de todas, que a gente vai comparar o resultado dessas fusões de construção com a ideia original de cada youtuber. Vocês estão preparados? Podem sair dos box pra gente poder ver. Nossa, velho! <risos> fizeram um pato no meu, velho! Meu Deus, Meu Deus, olha pra como ficou cada uma das construções. O meu era pra ser o mob que não ganhou a votação na última votação, que era o Ice Logger, e acabou virando uma pata guerreira. O meu era pra ser aquele cookie de meme, sabe? Ah, ficou parecido relativamente, ficou vai. Ficou parecido. O meu era pra ser o esqueleto afogado que ficava Ia, no Que doido! Ô, Mojang, por favor, esqueleto pirata afogado. Você é barco. muito louco? Ah, Cherry, o seu ficou parecido, vai. Não, ficou bom bonitinho, Verdade. seu. A ideia foi a mesma, né? É. Só que melhoraram a minha construção. Oh. Mais ou menos, né? <risos> eu, eu acertei, eu acertei, era um cacto. Eu que coloquei o um cacto. Ó, oh, mandou bem. E esse foi o troque de construção. Eu espero que vocês tenham gostado. Tamo junto. Falou. Well, that was pretty bonkers, wasn't it? I mean, that guy played Minecraft with two mice better than I play Minecraft with one mouse. But then again, I press shift with my thumb, so I guess I can't talk. Moving swiftly on, the next segment of the Minecraft Live Creator pre-show focuses on the history of Minecraft. And I've got the perfect machine to take us there. Honestly, every time I look at this thing, it, it makes my head hurt. Even though I built this and I know exactly how it works, it still hurts my brain. So let's not waste a single second. Let's head on inside and crack on with the next batch of videos. Oi, meu nome é Monkeise, eu tenho 21 anos e eu jogo Minecraft desde os meus 12. Eu tô pra completar 10 anos de Minecraft. Você tem noção disso? E não tem como eu dizer que eu não gosto desse jogo, porque eu amo esse jogo. Então eu tô aqui pra te contar o porquê que eu sou tão fascinada com Minecraft e como Minecraft influenciou absurdamente a minha carreira e a minha vida. Minecraft no começo era um jogo super simples, muito simples. Mas mesmo com essa simplicidade dele, ele ainda tinha algo que conseguia te prender a ele de uma forma absurda. E conforme o tempo foi passando e as coisas foram mudando, eu pude ver que o Minecraft não era apenas aquilo. Ele era um mundo de infinidades e possibilidades que iam ser adicionadas conforme o tempo. Ia mais e mais e mais e mais. E é tão bonito você conseguir ver a história do Minecraft. É lindo ver o que, que ele se tornou. E ver ele mudando e evoluindo e aprendendo. Porque a gente vai junto com ele. Sempre aprendendo coisas novas e evoluindo. Aprendendo mais ou menos. Eu tô pra aprender umas coisas aí. Mas é incrível ver como ele liberta a nossa imaginação de formas absurdas. De muitas formas diferentes e nos liberta junto com isso. E a forma que eu tenho certeza que a Minecraft mudou não só a minha vida, mas como a de milhares de outras pessoas é fascinante. E é por isso que eu continuo produzindo conteúdo com ele há mais de seis anos. Mas é óbvio que eu, como a grande jogadora de Minecraft que sou, sei que Minecraft tem umas regras que devem ser seguidas. Já fiz muitas coisas erradas, obviamente, mas eu também tô aqui pra aprender. Já morri pra Creeper. Definitivamente nunca quebrei um diamante com uma picareta de madeira, né? Cavei pra baixo. Algumas vezes. Algumas. Só algumas. Dormi no Nether? Nem se fala nisso. E olha, eu tenho uma dúvida, na verdade. Por que que o villager pode dormir no Nether e eu não posso dormir no Nether? E até mesmo, obviamente, quebraram a Bedrock. E eu ainda não aprendi. Eu, eu, eu tô tentando entender isso há alguns meses. Mas com o tempo a gente vai aprendendo e evoluindo com essas coisas, né? Alguém conhece esse cara de tempo aí pra ele me ensinar? Porque eu não tô aprendendo. Mas tudo bem, Minecraft é assim mesmo. Minecraft é se aventurar, é se explodir. Essa parte talvez não. E se divertir de várias e várias formas diferentes. Só que além de tudo, Minecraft é criar. Então Minecraft também é criação, é criadores. E assim ele te permite conhecer vários universos e cenários diferentes. Onde esses criadores são capazes de construir cenários e universos pra você se aventurar e se explodir de outras formas diferentes também. Eu poderia claramente dizer que Minecraft é infinito. Pela quantidade de coisas que não só o Minecraft cria, mas todo mundo cria junto com ele. E olha, eu já me aventurei muito. Graças a esses criadores. Eu já explorei muito. Então, muito obrigada a cada um deles. Porque tem sido uma jornada incrível. E é muito bonito, realmente, você ver toda essa história do Minecraft. Tudo que o Minecraft tem. E eu só quis mostrar um pouco do que eu aprendi. Até mesmo o que eu não aprendi com ele. Porque do passado do Minecraft a gente já conhece, né? Agora, o que eu tô louca pra saber é o que o Minecraft tem pra trazer pra gente. Me dá um spoiler aí. Oi! Nihon no YouTuber no Masou desu. 
僕のマインクラフトストーリーをお届けしていきたいと思いますではご覧くださいどうぞ僕が初めてマインクラフトをプレイしたのは2013年8年前になります当時日本ではまだ今のようにマインクラフトは浸透しておらずどんなゲームか分からずにプレイしていたんですがそれでもマインクラフトのね面白さに魅了されてどんどんプレイをしていきましたただ今考えると情けないプレイばっかりだったと思いますただそんな僕でもなんとかエンダードラゴンを討伐することに成功しさらにマインクラフトを通じて友達もできましたアメリカ人の、ね、友達トニーと共に宇宙を目指して旅をしたり月を目指してロケットで冒険をしたりもしましたその他にも危険なモンスターとの戦いを通じてマインクラフトの奥深さをさらに知っていきましたそれ以外にもね建築も楽しくプレイをしたりこのマスオの代名詞マグマダイブ<笑>まさかのマグマにダイブをしてしまいましてこれは日本の方たちに楽しんでもらえたようですその他にもマインクラフトは様々な形で僕を楽しませてくれましたマインクラフト PE そしてマインクラフトストーリーモード懐かしいですねそしてマインクラフトダンジョンズさらにはそしてなんとスウェーデンのマインクラフト本社へも行くことができ世界のねマインクラフトの友達もできさらにはマインコンライブでサブ MC をさせていただくという本当にかけがえのない素晴らしい体験をマインクラフトを通じてできましたこれからもたくさんの楽しい経験をさせていただこうと思いますのでぜひよろしくお願いします僕のマインクラフトストーリーご視聴いただき本当にありがとうございましたアシーコメンソーマインクラフト Podías poner nada más piedra. Había estos Steve por todo el mundo corriendo y brincando. La verdad, este fue el inicio de este maravilloso juego. Después continuó la versión clásica 0.30 de Minecraft, en la que podíamos poner bastante tipo de bloques, empezar a construir y a tener creatividad. Claramente podíamos activar y desactivar la lluvia con un solo botón, y esto era bastante interesante para aquellos tiempos de Minecraft. Posterior a ello, ya existía el modo supervivencia, ya podíamos recolectar esa madera, y por supuesto, ya había animales en el juego. Todo empezaba a formarse y a verse muy espectacular. Conforme seguía avanzando el juego, podíamos tener esta tercera persona que estaba lateral. Sí, chicos, en estas versiones era la única manera de poder tener esta cámara de Minecraft, y después de ello ya nunca volvió a existir en el juego. En el año de 2010, en la actualización de Halloween, podíamos obtener por primera vez el acceso al Nether. Claro que sí, esta versión de Halloween nos trajo esta maravillosa nueva dimensión. Llegando a la beta 1.8, dio inicio la actualización de aventura que ya traía en sí el modo creativo para construir. También las aldeas ya estaban disponibles, sin embargo, todavía no tenían aldeanos. Las grietas fueron añadidas, los desiertos y las planicies ya eran más grandes. Posteriormente, comenzando la segunda actualización de aventura, y sí, da inicio la nueva dimensión de El Fin, dándose a conocer el primer jefe del juego, el Dragón de Lend. No pasaron muchas versiones para que llegara la actualización bastante aterradora, así se llamaba, en la que por fin teníamos el segundo jefe del juego, el Wither. La actualización de exploración, en la que añadieron mapas para poder navegar, las maravillosas mansiones con sus respectivos habitantes. Después de ello, llegó la actualización acuática con delfines, nuevos biomas marinos como coral, algas y hierbas marinas. La actualización que le dio vida al océano completamente y nuevas aventuras. 
Llegando después, Village and Village, que traía muchas mejoras para las aldeas, pero mi parte favorita, los pandas. ¿A poco no son hermosos? La actualización abejas zumbantes nos ofreció una nueva forma de ver los bosques. Con estas hermosas criaturas las abejas que dan mucha alegría al juego. Minecraft ya había evolucionado mucho y faltaba la actualización del Nether que llega a Minecraft para sorprendernos. Añadiendo demasiadas cosas nuevas en el Nether para explorar y muchos nuevos peligros. Finalmente teniendo Minecraft en la actualidad con estas criaturas hermosas, los ajolotes, cuevas asombrosas y muchas cosas por explorar. Más de 10 años de Minecraft en pocos minutos. Well. That made me feel old. I remember pretty much all of those Minecraft updates. When I first started playing, beds had only just been introduced. I mean, can you imagine playing Minecraft without any beds? Anyway, this last section is a showcase of big community games. And uh, I've created my own little game right here. Let's see, how, how good is my aim? The pressure is on. <coughs> that didn't happen. Let's see if I can get this first try. There it is! <laughs> oh, yeah, I can promise you that the community games that are about to be showcased are far, far better than whatever this is. My name is Scott, Ors Major, or Dang That's a Long Name. A branding nightmare, I know. I'm a content creator who's been making Minecraft content for over eight years now. But my favourite thing that I've ever been part of is a small little Minecraft event that I make with Nox Crew called MC Championships. Since November in 2019, me and Nox Crew have been working together to make an amazing Minecraft event. The event sees 40 different content creators go head to head live in a variety of custom mini games, battling it out for the ultimate prize. An MCC coin! But rather than me sitting and explaining to you what MCC is, how about I show you? Roll the tapes! <gasps> It's starting. Up the countdown. Countdown. Oh. Ready up, ready up. We're gonna start. Oh, it's a laser, laser show. Laser memes. Oh bubbles. my god. Ah, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. This is when the anxiety rises for everybody. 15 seconds. This is where we get in there. It's MCC it's time. I'm so ready. I'm going in. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah. The decision yeah. dome. Here we go, gentlemen! Are we all ready to win? Blue yeah, I thought this was Ryan. How do I get out of this? I'll win. Oh, Ryan's up here. I killed Ryan? God damn. Give me bow and arrow. I got Johnny. Okay, we're kind of armored up now. Kind of. And by that, I mean very. Let's go. He's low H. Got him. It's Got him. Let's go! Let's go, baby! Look at that lead! Wow. More than double second place. Oh, man! Let's go! I'm so oh, it's happy. jungle right now. Done. Basically. Oh, perfect. I got it. I got it. There we nice. go. Yeah. Yay. Okay. We oh, came in first oh by so much. Oh, you guys are doing really good. Oh, this is a jumpy. <laughs> oh, I got it. Nice. Go up there. Woo! We're just vibing. I love that. We're, vibing. We're just having a great time. Having a grand old day. Just with I'm some pals. Vibing. Oh. Blue. Blue. Middle's the wave. Middle it. There we go. You got this. Green. Green. 3B. Right. I'm ready, dude. Three. Let's do it. Let's do this. Go, middle. Got Eric. Get hit off. I got Fundy. Kill the balls. I'm trying. I got her. I got her. I got her. We can do this. Oh. I've killed Pete. I've killed Pete. I killed Cronios, yeah, fill it in, fill it in, they're chasing me. Oh, well, I've got the okay, yeah. There we go. Fill it, fill it. Yeah, we won. We did it! Okay, we'll we'll there we go. Good work. Guys, we are smashing it. Watch out, there's GG. Oh, oh. No! I'm just stuck in oh. shoppies. Oh, I'm dead. Down I go. Yeah, I yeah. No, thank you. Bye, got, got killed. Hey. I'm run ready. No, I I've, I've gone off. Same. Scott, I died. Oh, no. oh, I got I didn't oh, That was a very delayed no. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, no, I got knocked out. Let's go! Oh, no! Seconds. People are knocking me off, you stupid, stupid stints! Sorry. Oh god, I can't see anything! Oh, I'll take you, I'll take you. Oh, I'm to you, mate. I don't have to uh, Oh, no! 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 Oh, no! Oh, no! Rush it off. It's a marathon. Yeah, not a sprint. 
Hey, run, Tong, just... Come on, man, come on. I got her. Nice. What are we doing? It got me down so <laughs> fast. Ah, <laughs> take no. <Yeah. gasps> oh, I saved myself. Oh, you. Ah, keep running, keep nice, running. You've got 10 nice. seconds left. I got them all. Go, go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Coming in. Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah, we did it. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll the wall. Beautiful. Okay, nice. Well played. Well nice, dude. Nice. That damage nice. broken I threw at her was like. Beautiful well round Let's go, baby. Oh, we're doing so Oh Tell me we made our way so in. Let's Maybe. go! Oh, Let's go! Oh, We're cool. going to dodgeball! Dodgeball time, boys! Wait, so whoever wins this wins? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! Get that crown. We're picking into universe. We win these. All right, no, real talk, Strats. Don't panic. We're gonna take our time. Do your thing and feel confident. We can do this. <laughs> I'm oh, okay. Ah. Go, go. He's aiming for no. me! Oh, you waiting? Got one. No, he hit me because he was aiming for you! Oh, wait, no, that's oh, I got one. Got fruit berries. Yes. I wanted oh him. God. I wanted him and I got him. Oh, okay. Wow. I got Eric. Oh. Yes! Oh, yes. No. I thought he was. Nice. Go, go. Nice. Yes. All right, that's okay. so Final round comes down to the fifth. Uh, this is ridiculous. This is the only way dogs about should be, shouldn't it? Oh, of course. We got this. This, this, this is the most fun ridiculous. I've ever had in my life. Let's go, boys. And balls. I got sound now. All right, three, two, one. Nice. Oh, no! Oh, come, on, come on, Shelby, you got this. Oh. It's just Shelby. Now, double arrow. Easy cut. Draw up. Shelby, oh. win the whole thing. I need to get one of them. Oh my god, Shelby to clutch. Come on. Oh. I slowed down, Weston. Yes! Nice. Yes, sir. Go! Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Let's go! Oh. Let's go! Oh. We won it! What? Let's what? go! Let's go! I can't stop! Oh. They said we couldn't do it. We did it. It feels Dude. good to be alive, guys. Let's we go. Oh, we get in the middle. No, no. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I was saying that my back hurt from oh. carrying. Wow, what an empty seat, guys. We're a winner, baby. Yeah, let's go. We're winners. Oh, that was beautiful. Scott, yeah, I'm actually going to cry. Oh, let's go, boys. Good job. Goodness. If you enjoyed the video and want to see some of your favourite content creators battle out head to head, you can tune in to the next MCC which is next Saturday on the 23rd of October at 8pm BST. Bye! El siguiente video está dedicado a toda la comunidad hispanohablante, pues es un honor para mí poder representarlos y además traerlos a esta Minecraft Live. 3, 2, 1... Todos adentro, todos adentro. Metemos 200 jugadores en la escuela, en una prisión de máxima seguridad, en 200 islas imposibles de Skyblock, en el sistema solar, en un parque de diversiones, en Latinoamérica, a construir una ciudad entera, en las olimpiadas donde todos representarán un país, donde deberán de sobrevivir, en la luna, tendrán que pasar por muchos retos. Elige la siguiente, elige la siguiente. A continuación se enfrentarán contra el guardián oceánico. El primero que salte de este avión con vida y pase por los obstáculos de Litras podrá ganar el premio. Tenemos un ganador, tenemos un ganador. Está cerca, lo hace, lo hace, lo ha conseguido. Todos tendrán que escapar de este barco y tener cuidado con el agua. Uy, ya tenemos a muchos jugadores eliminados porque se están cayendo. A continuación todos deberán de esquivar las poderosísimas chanclas. 200 jugadores asisten a mi boda. 200 jugadores construyen los ajolotes, el nuevo guarden y también las nuevas mega cuevas.
Thanks to my community for so many moments shared in this event. You teach me, you challenge me, you inspire me. Thank you Mojang for allowing us to be part of the Minecraft history. Let's keep growing this beautiful community. So that just about wraps things up for the Minecraft Live Creator Pre-Show. It is time for me to say goodbye. But coming up next is an incredible showcase of some of the amazing content that has been created in the year of 2021. I think this needs some fireworks. So hold on to your shorts and prepare yourselves for the 2021 Year in Review. Glow squid. Glow Go. Oh, and Anna has a waddle. Oh, and no. from the big blue house? What happened to the big blue house? What happened? Where are the rest of them? Where's the moon? Attack. Okay, we're doing this. We're getting a little bit closer than I wanted to. Oh man, my, my dragon is not doing good. They're, it's hard to aim. There we go, we got him. Got him. What What are you doing? Collectible? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just right clicking everything, Colin. Nah. A collectible is within 40 blocks. Hey, wait. What, what's happening? Oh, what? Yeah, but I'm going to be like that. So you can run and you can sprint and oh my god, it's so cool. Look at the jump animation. They've got all the sounds officially from Sega. This is insane. I love this. So you can- Oh my gosh. Yo, these blazes. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Yo, no, my iron golem. Why that thing? What did I do to deserve this? No! Run away. Okay, and die. Come on, come on, just nuke it down. It's dead, it's dead. With the ray tracing, it helps make everything look way brighter. It just makes everything pop. And technically speaking, you could have the ray tracing on and have another texture. So if that texture that you already have on is already kind of realistic enough and you go ahead and you throw ray tracing on it, it would look pretty dope. An Ocelot armor, good folk. If you can Ocelot armor. And that's done here. Oh, what is that? A whip? Whip, it picked up a whip. <laughs> oh, I mean. It's a guapísimo, colega. Oh, le metemos cangre y conseguimos por aquí y tenemos piraña. Uy, cuidado. Madre mía. Madre mía, madre mía, madre mía. Qué guapo es este mapa, tío. Mira, 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 mira. Oh, oh. That's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Look at this. Isn't that awesome? Look at the light coming down from there. That is so atmospheric. I love it. See, the natural lighting mixed with the warm light of the torches, I just love the atmosphere it makes. Ooh, that has a completely different vibe. Yo, I'm a minion. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello. Sneak around the side. Sneak around. Yeah. Yeah,ティタレやたティトー。あ、カウントタイムやろうな。わあ、スキリッケル。グリーンヒルジョン。うわ、ぶよ。で、よっぽどぶの。2D같은ゲーム생각했는데。よ。あ、ちょっと待って
my design of a pool table here. We've got our little holes that the balls can fall into. We've got a ball here. I oh, does he see me? Oh, I think. Oh, Sam. Oh no 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 no. Help! Oh, I got him. Oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! Hello and welcome to Minecraft Live 2021. I'm your host and chief storyteller of Mojang Studios, Lydia Winters. We have an exciting show for you today, filled with all things Minecraft. You'll vote a new mob into the game, hear what's happening in Minecraft Dungeons, learn how to design and play with your own Minecraft mob, find out the next Minecraft update, and much, much more. Seriously though, we have a packed show for you. The best part is that you get to hear everything directly from the cool humans making it, and they will give you the inside knowledge that no one outside of Mojang Studios knows our best kept secrets until we tell you all of them today. So let's do it. Our social team will be tweeting throughout the show and want to know what you think about everything we announce. Hang out with us here and also there. Last year, we announced quite an anticipated update, the Caves and the Cliffs update. We've seen all the incredible things you've done with Caves and Cliffs part one and can't wait to see what you do with part two. Agnes and Henrik are here to give us a peek into the surprising development process for Caves and Cliffs part two. Hi, Agnes. Hi, Henrik. Hello. Hello. Agnes, how are you feeling? I'm super happy to be here. I'm excited. Very excited. So excited. And Henrik, it's your first time on the Minecraft it live is, stage. It is. It's not your first time though, right? It is not my first time. <laughs> you two are going to tell us about Caves and Cliffs Part 2. And the thing that I think is the most amazing is how involved and how essential the community was to making it. Yes. Yeah, this update changes basically everything about, world, about the world generation in the game. So we've added like massive uh, ah. mountains, massive caves, and um, it's been really hard to kind of uh, balance that because we want to add all this new cool stuff. But when people are playing the game, we also want them to be able to, be able to encounter like the old familiar stuff. So this, this balancing act is really hard. So as designers and developers, when we you know, test the stuff we built, how do we know if it's any good, right? How do we know if it's, if it's better? So we, we've needed a lot of help and we've definitely gotten it. So we've been shipping snapshots, uh, betas every week and, and the people have been play testing and giving us feedback. And it's, it's just been wonderful. It feels kind of like they're uh, colleagues helping us to, to build this great game. That's amazing. And you have a like an amazing example of someone who took a lot of time giving yes. notes. Yeah, um, <laughs> for example, on, on, on uh, a, a player gave, a, tweeted at me uh, <laughs> this wonderful big picture showing like uh, across different snapshots um, in the same location what changed across across different snapshots and, and um, offered some opinions on that and some feedback. And this kind of stuff takes a lot of time to do. It's, 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 re it's research that the users are doing for us. Yeah. And we get a lot of this stuff and it just it just saves time. And it, and, um, and that's time that we can use, of course, to, to make the game better. That's so amazing. Yeah, it, it, it truly is. And I mean, this is like the biggest update we've ever done and we couldn't have done it without a community. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> and I know you were kind of nervous when you decided to split the update and like tell everyone about that. Yes, I mean, that's a, like, it's a very big decision uh, and we took it together as a team. But yes, when it was time to announce it, it, it was quite scary 
But we thought the best thing is just to be transparent, because like as we know, like Minecraft is crafted together with the community, and then it's good if we just are as honest as we possibly can. And then when we did announcement announce it, everyone was just you know so caring and understanding, and it like yeah, it shows we have the most beautiful community. So yeah, thank you. We absolutely do. <laughs> and it was so nice as a team to be able to not rush it since this change is so big to be able to do it properly and take the time and, and, and really do it well. So we're, we're we're super thankful that we got such so strong support for it. That's awesome. And I mean, sometimes during the development process, like things change and you decide you want things to be bigger and better, which kind of moves them to a different timeline. And I know we have one of those today. Yeah, we do. So we have been working quite a lot on like the deep dark, the warden and the skulk sensor. And we're so excited about this and we know everyone is. And so it's got to be bigger because we really want to do this right and do it with super high quality. But that, that's also the reason to that we moved it to the next update instead. And we're going to talk about the next update at the end of the show, yes. right? So we're going to show both some new things from the Deep Dark and some other new things. So that's exciting. So we'll move the Deep Dark feature set into the next update, which will be after Caves and Close Part 2. And we're going to look at that later in the show. You're going to get to see some really cool stuff <laughs> from Brandon. Now, Henrik and Agnes, you two are working with an awesome team of developers. Mm -hmm. And this was like quite a technical challenge. So we have an inside look at sort of a lot that went into Caves and Close Part 2. Yes. Yep, let's watch it. The best part of my job, I think it's just creating a game. Uh, I want to make people happy. In the new update, my I've been primarily focusing on creating the mountains and also putting everything together in the new generation of the world. So that's the caves and the mountains and everything in between. Uh, when I started this project about a year ago, I knew almost nothing about world generation and I learned so much. And it's really been a team effort, Java and Bedrock together. In this update, my role is to bring to life the cave part um, and together with our colleague who work on the mountains, we uh, present to you the cliffs and the caves update. One of the inspirations for the caves is um, the Song Dong uh, cave systems in Vietnam because that was one of the largest cave systems in the world. Um, and I feel so proud of it because I came from Vietnam and we get to use these cave systems in my country and put it into the game. So I felt so proud whenever we think about the caves. My job is to find what works slow in Minecraft and try to optimize it. Uh, the new update changes how the world looks a lot and it also affects performance quite a lot. The best part about my job is just finding something which can give a big benefit and then just seeing like, how M FPS improves or how frame time graph looks much better after the change. I would say the coolest part about my job is all of the wonderful colleagues that I get to work with. Um, they really inspire me, teach me and motivate me to, to be a better version of myself every day. We put in a lot of time and effort into this update and I hope that it will inspire and excite our community. It feels like it's a whole new game. What a great team you have! Oh, the best team. Yes. And now you know, we've been working on Caves and Cliffs Part 2. It's been so beautiful to see how everyone collaborated, like all the different roles, like Bedrock developers, Java developers, designers, artists, sound and so on. So, yeah, it's been so yeah, good. Like when you get a, a diverse group of people together in a room like that, even if it's a digital room, I guess, then yeah. and all focus on one thing like this, it feels like there's there's no problem you, you can't solve. Um, mm. Plus, it's, it's fun. <laughs> That's amazing. And then you add our community. They're doing bug, bug tracking. They're just everywhere yeah. giving us notes and feedback and telling us what's working. Yeah. So you add that to an amazing team and yes. it's really incredible. We really want actually to highlight everyone that helps us with the public bug tracker we have. So, so many players report bugs and then we also have the moderators and helpers and they help us so much with like uh, categorizing, finding duplicates, asking for additional information and it's extraordinarily helpful. We have a really amazing community. Yes. <laughs> now, you two have been, and, and actually the whole team has been just oh, yes. <laughs> kind of sharing images and seeds mm -hmm. as you're finding things. And you put together some really awesome worlds for us to look at. We did.
wow, <laughs> they're, they're beautiful. Yes. Yeah, what's interesting about this is when you look at that video, like initially the plan was just big mountains and our natural looking cool mountains and caves. But as we started working on it, the, the scope kind of grew because we realized that we need to change all the terrain to make this all fit together. But, but once we started seeing that work and it was so fun to see how the team started realizing that we're really onto something. This is going to be great. And seeing that inspiration spread and then also spread out to our community through the snapshots mm. has been really fun. Yeah, and yeah. we have been playtesting a lot and we're like, we couldn't stop playtesting. <laughs> <because Yeah>, we <laughs> get distracted <laughs> we, you all found the time. so many <laughs> cool places and it, it feels so inspiring. And that's what we want to do with Minecraft. We want to inspire everyone to play Minecraft in their own way. And like, we really feel that this new world generation inspires you like going on adventure, building, it's, uh, telling stories. So it's very exciting. That's amazing. And I mean, so you make all these changes, but then obviously we have so many players who've been playing for so long. I mean, the two of you have <laughs> worlds that are like 10 years old. And I just love the approach you took to keeping everything really safe for players who have existing worlds. Yes, it's very important for us to be respectful to players' worlds. And like Minecraft should be a game you can trust because we know that it's works and it will work for many many years then you can spend like all this love and, and time on your minecraft world so in caves and clips part two we have actually done two things mainly to make sure that everything works well and the first thing is blending so as you can see in the picture here to the left we don't have blending so then when you update your old world to the new world generation it would just be like an ugly edge <laughs> but now with blending it's actually all smooth and pretty that's beautiful. That makes a huge difference. And Henrik, I know the other part uh, you want to show us with your own world. Uh, yeah. So uh, um, what happens if you open your old world uh, with, with a new version of Minecraft? And uh, um, I, I took a look at what happens in my old world, which I've had for like 10 years playing with, with friends and uh, family. And uh, let's, let's take a look. So that's, there it is, all the <laughs> old stuff we built 10 years ago. But that's what happens when you when you open the world in 1.18. So it basically generates new caves beneath the old areas. And the idea is to create the illusion that that was there the whole time. We just, mm. you know, we just didn't go there until now. And wow, look, look what I found. Yeah. Don't look, so, Henrik. There's so <laughs> many spoilers there under yeah. your world. No, I, so many cool I, things. I, I, I was squinting, okay? Okay, good. <laughs> That's like the first thing I'm going to do when I update is just like digging straight down. Well, not straight down, actually. Okay, good. <laughs> but I'm going to see what's under my base. That's so cool. I just love that it adds so much to the existing worlds that our players have. And so you're keeping them safe and adding a lot to it. And that's also an important thing. We don't want to force players to have to pick between mm. just the new or just the old. So we want them to be able to experience both things in, in, the, in the same world. That's amazing. Throughout the show, we're going to have creator questions and you two get to have the first one. Mm -hmm. All right. Will Jabba and Bedrock get part two at the same time? Uh, yes, the plan is to release this on Java and Bedrock at the same time, um, and also to ship it with what we call Seed Parity. And that's, uh, what does that mean? So um, Seed is this name for the magic number that is used to determine how your whole world looks like. So every world is, is unique, and that's driven by the seed. And when you create a new world, uh, it gets a randomly uh, generated seed. But if you dig that seed up, if you really like what you see, you're like, wow, this world is wonderful, I want to share it with my friends, you can dig up that number and share it with others. And then if they open uh, a new world with that seed, they'll see the same thing. Uh, but what's new for this update is that that also works between Bedrock and Java. That's amazing. Yeah. So if you create a world in, in Java and you think it's beautiful, you want to share with others, anyone who, who opens a world with that seed, regardless of which edition they're playing, will, will see essentially almost exactly mm. the same thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's almost identical. And um, it's a thing in the community, you know, you find a super cool location and you share it, like, look at this world I found. And before, you couldn't do that with players on the other edition, but now everyone can just share cool places together. And I think that's really nice. It's really amazing. I mean, when you find these amazing, epic <laughs> things in Caves and Close Part 2, you obviously want to be able to share them. So seed parity is huge. I think everyone's going to be so excited about it. So we're that. not 100% there yet, but close. It's Getting very close. similar. <laughs> <laughs> Details will be different. But Seed yeah. almost parody. Seed almost parody. That's, that's it. That's what we're going to call it. So I know everyone is anxiously, including myself, waiting for this update. When do we get it? So it's actually almost done. So we're going to release it in a month or two. That mm. is amazing. Thank you so much, Agnes and Henrik. Thank, Thank you. you. Caves and Cliffs Part 2 will be coming to a screen near you in one to two months. And speaking of screens, soon there will be another place to play Minecraft. On November 2nd, Minecraft comes to Xbox Game Pass for PC.
Ah, Minecraft. It's a game all about togetherness and teamwork. Let's take a look at some of Minecraft's most terrific teams. Zombies and the Drowned. Maybe not the best example. Let's try another. Cobblestone and Mossy Cobblestone. A relationship that's truly rock solid. Oh dear. How about Steve and Creeper? Okay, maybe not Steve and Creeper. Not them. Not them either. Ooh, that's got to hurt. You realize this is going out live, right? If we don't find a great example of Minecraft togetherness soon... What's that, goat? You've got the best example of togetherness yet? Okay, this better be good. Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Java Edition. Finally, coming together for... No, that's not right. Absolutely not. That's the ticket. Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Java Edition are coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC. We debated which edition to add to the service and decided why not add both. That means Game Pass for PC will be the only way to get Bedrock and Java in one place. Convenient. Perhaps a little too convenient? In any case, starting in November, you can play the original Blockbuster, its cross-play supporting cousin, and a cartload of other games with Game Pass for PC. Excellent point, Goat. Game Pass does have PC games. And personally, I can't wait to play those PC games with my two best friends. Ah, the sweet smell of togetherness. Hello, Minecrafters of the world. I'm VooBooey, and I'm back yet again to help guide you through this year's incredibly important and potentially life-altering vote, remember the Phantom? For an amazing mob that will be added to Minecraft. For those of you who haven't been a part of Minecraft Live before, here's how it works. Our developers came up with three different mobs that they think could potentially be a great addition to Minecraft for a variety of reasons. But you, the community of Minecraft players around the world, get to decide which one gets further developed and brought into the game in a future update, and which ones will live on only in our hearts as what could have been. Like you, little baby. I'll never forget you. Moving on. The actual winner of last year's intense mob vote was none other than the Glow Squid. If you haven't run into these majestic creatures swimming around under the stars on a clear night, you are really missing out. But that was last year and this is now. So here's what you need to do. We have three mobs for you to choose from and there will be two rounds of voting. The first round, of course, will include all three mobs, but one will get voted out. In the second round, there will only be the two remaining mobs, then just one winner in the end. As in previous years, the vote will happen on Twitter. So if you don't already have an account, you'll need to quickly make one. And if you do have an account, make sure you're logged in. Then when I tell you it's time to vote, go to the Minecraft Twitter account and check out the live voting poll with all three mob options. Pick the one you want to see added to Minecraft and click to cast your vote. That's it. It's like super easy. Well, the clicking part is easy. The choosing part, considerably more difficult. Now that you know what to do, let's go over your options. And who better to talk about our three potential new mobs than someone who is tiny in size, but never in heart, the one, the only, Tiny Yens. Hey, Tiny Yens. So can you help by telling what? Aunt... Oh. What? I can't hear you. Hold on. Oh. I'll come up to the surface. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll just wait. Uh, oh, hey. Oy, oy, oy. Watch it there. Can you hear me now? What? I still can't hear you. Hold on. So impatient. Ooh. A little testy. Just Phew. Wait. Oh, Tiny Yens. You made it. Can you tell our viewers all about this year's mobs? I'm actually very busy. 
I lost Tiny Agnes again. I had retraced my steps, and now I'd have to go all the way back down there. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but don't worry, don't worry. I know someone who can fill in for me. Great. Thanks. Oh, okay. Bye, Tiny Jens. <laughs> Jens, you're hi. here. Hi, Boo. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank I guess you. Tiny Jens sent you while he looks for Tiny Agnes Ex- once again. Exactly, exactly. It's, a, it's, it's a tough, tough job. To it really yeah. is. Yes. Well, since you're here, can you please tell everyone all about this year's mobs? Absolutely. Uh, so, as you already mentioned, the team came up with uh, three lovely uh, creatures that we believe that players will enjoy interacting with. And uh, they are the Glare, the Lay, and the Copper Golem. Those all sound really cool. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, to begin with, we have the Glare, uh, which is uh, it's, uh, a creature that flies around and uh, doesn't really like dark areas because okay. it, it knows that in dark areas there will m- might be monster spawn. Yes. So naturally, it goes to those areas and gets really grumpy about it, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that is to bring that a player's attention so that the, the problem can be fixed. Okay. Um, and uh, we are uh, thinking about ideas uh, that in certain circumstances uh, the glare may even help you light up these areas okay. to, to sol- solve your uh, monster spawning problems. The glare sounds amazing. I'm ready to vote glare now. Yes, but then we have the LA, okay. which is also a flying lovely creature uh, that loves music and uh, who doesn't? A nice, a nice sounds. And uh, if you give it an item, it will start looking for similar items uh, lying around and bring them to you. Okay. And if you also play on a note block, it will drop the items on that location instead. That's uh, useful. Yes, and we imagine that uh, players can maybe use this to make the LA help you with, I don't know, sorting items or clearing up areas. Yeah. I, I think the, there are many possibilities. Okay, so vote LA. I get it. Yes, but then we have the copper golem. Oh. And uh, as the name implies, it's a, it's a golem made out of copper. So it's an excellent use for copper. And uh, it will also like interact with you. And uh, since it's made out of copper, it will over time oxidize and uh, maybe it, like turn into a statue. But don't worry, you can uh, deoxidize it using an axe or okay. it actually carries around a lightning rod on its head. So it, it will a lightning strike and also deoxidize it. Um, wow. In addition, uh, it loves pressing uh, buttons a little bit randomly, uh, specifically copper buttons. But it randomly presses. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so that can also be used in some interesting contraptions, we believe. That's amazing. So copper golem, LA, glare, all sound good. How do people choose? I think it's going to be quite difficult. But you've given them a lot to think about. So I I think people will figure out what they like the most. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jens, for coming by. I have now a creator question for you. Hola, soy el 97 de México y tengo unas preguntas para ustedes. Primera pregunta, ¿cómo deciden qué mob poner a votación cada año? Segunda pregunta, ¿cómo se le ocurre al equipo cada nuevo mob? Última pregunta, ¿se basan en los comentarios de la comunidad de fans o es inspiración del equipo? Okay, those three questions I think everyone who wants to know the answer of. Yeah, uh, well, ideas and inspiration can come from many places. Sometimes it just spontaneously appears when you're walking around in the park or uh, often like you play other games, watching movies or playing Minecraft. Uh, and the community is also a great help. They have of so many ideas and they do so many f- fun things. Uh, so we we have a l- lot of ideas to work with and we need to figure out like which ones do we do we want to do next. And a good way of doing that is actually playing in the game and see which areas that can be improved. Um, so uh, <laughs> I lost my train. I mean, thought. there's so many different <laughs> ways that these ideas come. <laughs> And that's really exciting to hear. Yeah. So wh- when the community votes on a mob today, that mob is going to move forward towards being in Minecraft. Like how finished already is that mob? Or d- is there a lot of work to do? Well, of course we have the big 
concept that we wanted uh, to do. But once we have the mob in the game and see how it interacts with the areas and other mobs and items, that's when you kind of find the last magic little details to make it really great. I like hearing about the last magic details. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks, Jens. You've given everyone a lot to think about. All right, now you know what your options are. And if you already knew, you know a little more about them. Soon, I'll let you know when the first voting round goes live. For now, let's take a look at something pretty fantastic coming to Minecraft that you don't even have to vote on. Earlier this week, Lydia spoke with Fanny and Quinn from our awesome creator team over in Redmond to get a first look at some interesting things they've been working on. Each year, we show you some of the cool new things made by our creators for Minecraft Marketplace. This year, we're going to do that and show you how to start creating Minecraft things yourself. I finally made my first mob. It's very weird. Fanny and Quinn are here to tell us all about how we can all become creators. Hi, Fanny and Quinn. Hello, Lydia. Hey, so, Lydia. It's so great to be here. Like, just so exciting to talk about our creators and what a better place to do it than surrounded by the art that they have created. I know. I walked onto the set and I was like, oh my God, those are... Jollycraft skins, those are Cupcake Brianna, that's Ka Studios. It was so cool just seeing all of their skins and worlds and concepts all on the wall. They are really amazing. I mean, the creativity from our creators, hmm, those names, that makes sense now. It's, it's just mind blowing. Before we get too far in though, we should probably explain to everyone what, what is a creator? Yeah, of course. So a creator is really anybody who makes Anything in Minecraft, you know, whether you're doing skins, textures, worlds, terraforming, UI, and even for me, like people that are making mods and add-ons and you know that kind of more developer type, those are creators too. Definitely. For me, the way that I always like to think about it is that a creator is anyone that makes something in Minecraft and then shares it with someone else. And that can be like little Mac sharing it with their friends at school, or that could be a team of creators that sell something in the marketplace. And then everything in between, right? And our mission really is to empower all of them to make whatever their imagination is telling them to do. We want to really give you all the means, documentation, tools to be able to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's just such a cool thing to be able to work on that everybody can be a creator. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And Fanny, you mentioned tools. I think it's so interesting. Your team is actually building things that creators use to build things on top of. Like, what is your favorite tool that you've made? Oh God, that is such a hard question. We have so many, but I'm going to be a little bit selfish for a second and just pick one that I worked on recently. Like as a manager, I rarely get the chance to actually write code, which I love doing. And this time we had a game jam and I actually picked a, com a creator community request, uh, which is like, implement a damage command that will help you like do cool effects with other mobs. And I just worked with a designer and we created this together. And I'm so excited to know that the team is actually now taking my code and is going to ship it for real. Very excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's just so cool that you're able to do something just in a game jam mm -hmm. and then it turns into something real that our creators can use. For me, my favorite is the structure animation. Last year, we shipped a map called Simburbia by Jiggerbob that is basically this world that you can you know, manage your city, create plots for commercial, residential, balance your economy. And every single time you place one of those plots, it animates layer by layer by layer, adding just this immersiveness and polish to the map that just makes it, I don't know, above and beyond. That's so cool. I mean, so many of our creators are using the innovative tools that you've made to just like expand what they're working on. And we have some awesome examples of that.
I love how many examples there were of creators just using those tools in all different ways. What's that like for you to see, Fanny, when your team, you've all been working on making those things for our creators? It's definitely one of my favorite parts of like working with creators. You just give them one tool or two and they will make these crazy, amazing things. Like many times I see their creation, I'm like, how do they even do that? Like I know they're using our tools, but I don't know how they did that. It's so crazy. It's, it's mind blowing sometimes just what they're able to do with just the small little things that we give them. Mm -hmm. That's really, really cool. And we have a creator question for the two of you. Hey everyone, I'm EY Stream, a Minecraft YouTuber, and I've got a question for you. Are these awesome features just for people who have experience in modding or creating content? And if we wanted to, how do people learn more about these features? It's such a great question because the answer is no. They aren't just for you know advanced modders or people that have been in the right. community for a long time. We actually just launched a new website we call it Learning Portal. It's on minecraft.net slash creator. And on that site, it basically links out to all of our resources to how to learn how to become a creator, learn how Minecraft content creation works. It also links out to our brand new documentation site mm -hmm. that allows you to just go super deep into you know learning the components and learning entities. And then the coolest thing that we added, which is how we made our mobs, is we use the Minecraft entity uh, wizard, which is created by Yanis. And it's a block bench plugin that allows like super easy creation of mobs that you can add to your own Minecraft game. Hello everyone, my name is Yanis. I'm a software developer and Minecraft content creator. In 2017, I started to create my own 3D modeling program called Blockbench. The program is all about creating boxy, pixely models, which makes it perfect for the Minecraft art style. Today, Blockbench supports many Minecraft formats, ranging from Bedrock Edition add-ons to Java Edition resource packs and mods. The program is used by Minecraft creators all around the world to create models, animations and player skins. Almost all 3D models you see on the Minecraft Marketplace were made in Blockbench and it was even used to design some of the new vanilla mobs, such as the goat and the axolotl. This summer I've collaborated with Mojang to create a new plugin for Blockbench. The plugin makes it super easy to get started with add-on creation, by generating everything you need for a custom entity in just a few clicks. I'm going to demonstrate the process by making a simple grizzly bear. To install the plugin, I'm heading to File, Plugins, Available, search for the Minecraft Entity Wizard, and press install. That brings up this handy shortcut on the start screen. Let's go! I'm going to pick a preset that looks similar to the grizzly, like this polar bear, and I'll use the same for the behavior. Okay, now the add-on is created on your computer. Now let's start customizing our model using Blockbench. For this example, because we already have a bear model, I'm just going to recolor the model. Of course, you could also change the whole model to turn it into something entirely different like this butterfly that I made, and is based on the vanilla bat. Okay, this looks good. Now I'm going to press save and switch over to Minecraft. I can find our new grizzly bear pack in the behavior pack section and simply enable it. This will automatically enable the resource pack as well. Now let's check out the entity in-game. I just need to grab a spawn egg from the inventory and use it. And here's our grizzly bear. Have fun creating. It's free and works on all platforms. I already told you all that I made a mob, but actually all three of us made mobs because we wanted to showcase that anyone can be a creator. So Fanny, tell us about your adorable mob that you made. Thank you. Yes, I, I was so excited to know that Blockbench was a thing because I immediately thought I need to add my dogs to Minecraft. I really, really love them. And I was just so excited. Like Blockbench made it very easy for me to just obsess over every, every single detail. Like every pixel was like, does that look like my dog? And then I also modified the geometry, especially the tails, uh, to look like the exact twist that my dogs have. I really obsessed a lot. And I was very happy, especially when I was able to add my own animation. I I'm definitely not an art person and I like, just made it so that it like wiggles their tail when they are sitting. I, I was just so happy to be able to do that. They turned out so good. I thought it was super cute that you're able to get both of them in there. Thank you. So me being kind of a you know 
born in the Pacific Northwest, outdoorsy. I mean, I'm wearing flannel on the on the stage. I wanted to kind of pull something from that nature. So I made Evelyn Evergreen. Uh, she's this uh, kind of cute little uh, evergreen tree that you maybe see, you know, walking around the, the deep forest, um, so kind funny. of fantasy driven. Um, then I animated the arms and the legs, just these be little stick legs that kind of walk around uh, just to add something, you know, kind of, you know, kind of cute and cool to the forests. Her eyes are really staring right into my soul. I love it. I would love to just happen upon Evelyn in the forest. So I went a totally different direction from the two of you. I know, Quinn, you ba built your mob from scratch. Fanny, you built yours on top of a wolf. I built mine on top of something. I did not animate. I just wanted to do the beginner's course of block bench. And so I made something very near and dear to my Florida heart with a twist, which is what I'm calling an alolotl, an axolotl, and an alligator. <laughs> it's a, kind of like a little dragon. It does look like a little dragon. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good mashup there. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, I thought an alligator and axolotl would be super innovative when added together, but it does just look like a dragon. But I'm okay with that because I am a creator now based yeah. on your definition because exactly. I made that and I showed it to all of you, which seeing something that you make in a game that you've played, you know, for me for 11 years, it was, it was amazing. It is so rewarding really to be able to just do that. So we encourage you all to try it. Like if someone that like paint is the only skill that I have, like I know everyone can do it. So please go install Blockbench and try it out. Like we would be so, so incredibly like proud to just see everything that you have built. We would love to see it. Yeah. It's available on all the platforms and just, you know, post them on Twitter, post them on wherever you do. And, you know, we'll probably run across some of those and we love seeing them. Oh, I can't wait to see what everyone else creates. And I mean, I think that our our mobs are definitely ready for the mob vote next year. So we don't even have to work on anything else. These three are, are perfect. I'm going to have to talk to the team about that. <laughs> mm. So we're not professional creators, obviously by our mobs, even though they're lovely. But Quinn, you get to work with people who, this is their full-time job, making Minecraft content for Marketplace. What is that like? It's something that I'm just immensely proud of. Like being able to see so many people engage in the Marketplace and allow that, you know, allow creators to become full-time Minecraft content creators as their careers. Um, I mean, I think it's incredible too because the Marketplace doesn't just support you know, these huge studios, uh, but we also have really small independent creators that, you know, make just texture packs um, or like Shalequin Schematics, that's just a family on the on the West Coast that makes their own worlds. And uh, the fact that the marketplace can support all of them and, you know, make it their full-time jobs is something that is just so cool. There's so much new content that our creators have made that we put together a video with some of our favorites from this past year. It almost feels like a dream that I'm making a living, making content for the marketplace. It is the best job that I could possibly ask for. just got to see some amazing reactions from the fans and people love the map and that's just so heartwarming and lovely to see and it really does put a smile on our faces. The thing I like most about creating inside of Minecraft is the community that's been built up around it. There's so many amazing creative people and it's been a privilege to be able to meet and work with so many of them.
the end of podium in the middle. Oh no! Spoilers! Ace, wow! We're kicking things off with the announcement of the... We're gonna tell you right now. The update Aquatic. Village and Pillage. Seriously, like, I'm so excited. Bees! Bees! Let's look at some bees! To finally have a nether update. Holiday update will have the cats, pandas, bamboo and scaffolding. Caves and cliffs update! David Nisagen. I am the one that gets to decide how difficult the bosses are. The results of the first vote are in. The winner is Taiga! Mountains. It's the glow squid! <gasps> this is your chance to have a say in what goes into Minecraft. What do I do now? Moppy! <laughs> Ten years ago, I stepped on the Minecon stage for the first time. I still get nervous and excited every single time I'm on this stage, but mostly I feel incredibly honored to be in front of you. I hope what you see and feel from each of us at Mojang Studios is our passion for Minecraft and our gratitude to all of you in our amazing community. Okay, now before I get way too, even more sappy than I was, let's head over to Boo and hear more about the adorable mobs that you must pick between. Here we go. It's almost time to vote. Before we do though, let's take a quick look at your choices once more. We have the glare. A mob that lets players know when they're in an area that's dark enough for monsters. You can bring it with you and it will fly to dark areas. When it gets grumpy, you'll know that it's dark enough for monsters to spawn. Then there's the allay. If you give it an item, it will collect matching ones for you. It also loves music. So if there's a note block nearby, that's where it will drop these items for you. And finally, the copper golem a little golem that you yourself can make out of copper. They oxidize over time and will eventually freeze into statues. They love spending their time randomly pressing copper buttons, which would also be added to the game if the copper golem wins the vote. So those are your choices and they are all so amazing. How will you choose? Jens gave us a lot to think about and now you need to decide which mob you think you'd enjoy the most during your time playing Minecraft. Any of them would be useful but choose your favorite and go vote for it now. Yes, that's right, the poll is now open. To cast your vote, make sure you're logged into your Twitter account, go to the Minecraft Twitter account and find the freshly launched poll with all three choices. Don't forget to click on the mob you most wanna play Minecraft with. You can do it right now. After the first round of votes, I'll check back in with you so we can open the final round. Greetings, my name is Narrator, and I'm the star of the Minecraft YouTube channel. And I'm Marilla, I'm the actual star of the Minecraft YouTube channel. We're here to tell you about all the excellent shows you can watch on our channel. Subscribe tomorrow. Don't you mean subscribe today? No. How do you spell Minecraft? What even is Minecraft? These are just some of the questions you can ask our studio's brightest minds on Ask Mojang. We've actually received a question for us just now. 
Do you think making a video game is the easiest thing in the world? No. Literally no one thinks that. Well, I did. Until I started watching this informative series that goes behind the blocks of every part of Minecraft Dungeons development. Do they show the footage of you tearfully begging to be put in the game? Maybe in series three. Meet a Minecrafter interview some of the most incredible members of the Minecraft community. They asked me to appear on it, but I was too busy being young and cool and attractive and not lying. Okay. With so much happening in the world of Minecraft, it can be easy to lose track. I myself only recently learned that blocks have been added to the game. Subscribe to our channel and you'll be the first to see our announcements, trailers for new updates, upcoming games and the exciting future of Minecraft. Are you sure that's the right footage? Finally, this is our peerless show that tells you Minecraft's most scandalous secrets. Every month, we... We're out of time. Bye! No, oh, we're not. We still have a few seconds left. Have a great Minecraft Live, everyone. No! Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and only watch my... Now let's welcome Laura to talk all about Minecraft Dungeons. Hi, Laura. Hi. So you have a pretty cool job at Mojang Studios. Yeah, I think I have the coolest job. It's sometimes difficult to believe, but I'm the lead designer of Minecraft Dungeons. And that means that I get to decide a lot of small things and details and bring a lot of ideas to the table. So hopefully make the game a bit better. That does sound cool. Yeah. You and the Dungeons team have been working so hard recently. And oh, you've yeah. recently had a couple of really cool releases. Yeah. Yeah, it's been crazy. Uh, we recently released to Steam, uh, and I did something that they never recommend you to do, <laughs> but I did it anyway, and I read the um, reviews. And uh, That's yeah, dangerous. Yeah, it was, but it was so positive. It was so full of excitement and love for the game. And yeah, we were so, so proud to see how much the community loves it. So yeah, we were very happy. And also this week, we've released the Spookier Fall update, uh, which brings back a lot of spooky modifiers to the game, uh, gear, a new cape, a new pet. And there's my new favorite armor, uh -huh. which has a spoon staring in your head. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, it, it it's lovely. I like it so much. A lot of fun to stare at while you're playing, mm -hmm. but it might distract you a little. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> so. Those just came out, but we also have some new and exciting things to look at yeah. that haven't come out yet. Yes, let's check it out. video is so exciting. Yeah, I love that trailer so much. It has so many details. So 
There's a lot going on in that video oh, and yeah. a lot to talk about, but why don't we start with, now the DLC is done, what are seasonal adventures? Right, yeah. Now that we are over with the story of the Orb of Dominance, we sat together with our friends at Double Eleven and we started working on seasonal adventures, which are a new way for the player to progress through the game and increase in ranks, gather points, and hopefully get cool rewards at the end. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So how long do they last? Right. Uh, seasonal adventures, although the name is seasonal, uh, will be infinite, technically. Okay. So, for, for instance, say we release seasonal adventure number two, you will always be able to go back to seasonal adventure number one, gather some rewards there, go back to number two, gather some rewards there. So it's a bit up to you what you decide to do with it. That's amazing. So it just lasts forever. You get the new content and you still have the old content. All the content. And speaking of content, mm -hmm. what are some of these new things that players can unlock? Right, yeah, we added tons of new rewards that are completely new to the Minecraft universe. Uh, some old, some new. Uh, we have tons of new pets. Uh, we have things like the duck and the fox, and I am so in love with all of them. We have flares. <laughs> which are new VFX that you can apply to your character. So whenever you drink a potion or you beat an enemy, you get to show off a little bit and get some shininess there. Um, also, we got in some emotes, which are these little dances or little expressions you can do with your character. Show uh, off a little. Yeah, exactly. And have some fun with your friends. Why not, like, like we see here, having a party. <laughs> also, we added tons of new capes, because everyone loves capes. They do. And tons of new skins just in case we were missing That's a it. lot of skins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a ton of skins, yes. Well, now we have a question from a Minecraft creator. Right. Hey, Strawberry17 here, and I have a question. Will there be free content included as a part of Seasonal Adventures? <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, we always try to make sure there's content for everyone regardless. So for seasonal adventures, there'll always be a free track and a track you can pay for. So there'll be different rewards in each and you'll be able to get whichever you want at any time. So yeah, we wanted to cater everyone. That's great. So how do you earn rewards? Right. You will be able to get adventure points all throughout the game, uh, meaning that doing the regular stuff you do, you'll get them. Like, say you beat a daily trial. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the daily trial, you get adventure points. Also, we implemented new weekly challenges. So we'll ask you, like, this week, if you beat the 100 zombies, you'll get extra adventure points. That's a lot of zombies. Yeah, but people do it so fast. <laughs> I'm also impressed. Um, and also, the best way to get adventure points is in the tower. Okay, the tower, which we have not spoken about no. yet. No. So what is the tower? The tower is another free single player feature that we've added to camp. So you'll be able to see this gigantic tower in the camp. I love how it turned out. Uh, and it is a space with 30 different floors, each floor harder than the one before. And you'll get to fight the arena mobs. You'll get to fight bosses. Uh, you'll get to meet some new tower inhabitants and yeah, hopefully explore around and be able to test your skill. So you will start with a completely blank character from the bottom and you'll be able to find new gear as you progress. Okay. So yeah, the floors get more difficult, your character gets stronger, and you can test your skill. That sounds really fun. So let's take a look at some live gameplay of the tower right now. And for that, right. we have JP. Hi, JP. Hello, how do you like my throne? I think you stole that throat from the Arch Illager. I think he stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Looking so off my stuff, let's go loot the tower. Nice. So what are we seeing here, Laura? Right, so we prepared some special floors to showcase here. So this is an example of a very early floor in the tower. So if you see JP's tower avatar uh, has very little amount of gear. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you'll be always have the context that you're high up in the tower, that right? so cool. Yeah. We also wanted to make sure that uh, the tower was this whimsical, magical space. So yeah, we have a boat, we have a river, why not? Uh, <laughs> so you'll be able to find a ton of magical spaces and uh, uh, new characters to meet. Uh, so yeah, this level is quite easy, as you can see. Uh, since it's very early on. Yeah, JP's doing really well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, 
and we can see a sneak peek up there in that balcony. That's uh, our tower keeper. Very cool. Yeah, that's a character that will guide you through the tower and yeah, will guide you around and ooh. Wow, JP did really well. Yeah, Maybe it was, it was a so fast. too easy. Yeah. So each of these levels generates itself, but you can come back for up to two weeks and replay the same thing. Right, yeah. Our tower runs will be seeded uh, and they will change every two weeks, meaning that for two weeks, you'll be able to learn what happens in every floor. So say... Uh, I reach floor five and I get defeated at floor five. So then next time around, I'll remember, ah, I should have chosen a different weapon and then I bet I could have done it. So yeah, you can share that, those tips with your friends and you can learn together how to go through the tower. Yeah, practice yeah. and get better. Exactly. All right, let's give JP a real challenge now. Right. We're going to go up the tower to a much higher floor. Right. You ready, JP? Let's do it. Right, so here we've prepared an, a sample of what a harder floor could look like. So we try to add new exciting combinations of mobs that we've never had before. Uh, so JP is right now fighting jungle mobs, but there'll be ice mobs together with them and there'll be some new mobs. Here you can see some tower wraiths uh, that spawn fire in different new combinations. We also will have uh, tower guards, which are extremely bulky mm -hmm. guards. We even have a oh. guest in the mix, and uh, JP is getting wow. sn sniped <laughs> by it. So we're getting, to yeah, that's a tower guard right there. So yeah, we're getting tons of new combinations and new ways to experience the game and defeat mobs and find strategies. And the gas looks really difficult. Yes, yes it is. Uh, oh. JP's not doing so good right now. No. Let's see. Oh, JP, that was a valiant attempt. Yes. Really, really ah, good. That was so good. So. You've talked about so many new things, but yeah. when will people get to see them? Right. We'll get to see them. Hopefully everyone will get to play in December. December. So very, very soon. That is very soon. Thank you so much, Laura, for coming by. This is all very exciting. Thank you for having me. Let's take one last look at some gameplay from the tower. Once again, our friends at Element Animation have made us something to enjoy and perhaps even sing along to, all while taking us through everything you can do right now from Caves and Cliffs Part 1. Try not to get this one stuck in your head all week. I only say this because it's been stuck in mine. Hey, you two! Have you discovered all the features in Part 1 of the Caves and Cliffs update? a few of all the things there are to find like jump across some drip leaves make your house from these spending too much time in powder snow will make you freeze you can find raw copper smelt some ingots into blocks a lightning rod and thunderstorms will stop you getting shot copper oxidizes but to stop it make it wax craft your raw ores into raw blocks if you've got too many stacks <laughs> you can find axolotls in the Well, it's been quite the turnout for our first round of mob voting. You have made your decision and now one mob must go. We have the glare, the allay, and the copper golem. But you, the community, have spoken and now one mob must leave the race. And that mob is the glare. 
So that still leaves two amazing mobs to choose from. Which one do you want? Will it be the Alley or the Copper Golem? How do you see yourself playing and interacting with them in the future? Which one will make your game life easier or more fun? Or like the Year of the Phantom, way more terrifying? Don't worry about what anyone else wants. This is all about you and how you want to play Minecraft. But make your decision quickly because it's time to vote again. There's a brand new poll just posted to the Minecraft Twitter account with only these two mob finalists to choose from. Make sure you're logged onto Twitter and click the mob that you just can't wait to spend your days and nights with in the game. Your vote really counts, so don't miss out on your chance to change Minecraft. I know who I'm going to vote for, and I think I can see Yen's voting right now. Okay, so I know this will come as a surprise to pretty much all of you, but I definitely didn't love everything about school. Maybe that would have been different if I had Minecraft in my classes. Minecraft Education Edition is available for schools, homeschools, and after-school programs. You can explore awesome education content in Minecraft Marketplace, Re learn about everything from sustainability to ancient worlds, even how to speak new languages, all in Minecraft. The coolest part is seeing how with Minecraft, the students often become the teachers. When I tried becoming the teacher in my fifth grade science class, well, let's just say it wasn't appreciated. But anyway, let's take a look at how Minecraft is being used in classrooms around the world by kids who didn't get in trouble just for telling everyone that homework was canceled forever. Young people all over the world are using Minecraft to explore issues that matter like social justice, climate change, and indigenous rights. We have different classes such as Braille and Sign Language. We reached out to one of our teachers who learned Braille and she taught us a thing or two. Take a look at what these girls built, a school of the future. They thought about clean energy and inclusive design. An interesting fact about our building is that we use coding to build a playground. It was very fun to make. Students in India and Malaysia translated ancient myths into Minecraft worlds. Under the guidance of my educator Kamal Ma'am, I would like to present to you an indigenous tale, Chiri and Ka, from Punjab, the land of five rivers. In Canada, Australia and New Zealand, classrooms are using Minecraft to explore indigenous cultures. And they're not just building blocks, they're building super useful skills. Games like Minecraft prepare you for the future teaching us how to work together, solve problems, and even write code. Normally in school, it's like, here's this, do this, off you go. But now it's like, blank schedule, Minecraft, yes please. This summer, students imagined a greener New York City in an epic citywide esports battle. I don't know about you, but I wish I had this in school. I think I would have been all over oh, this. Oh, I <laughs> absolutely. Kids in Wales designed more sustainable rugby stadiums. Teams of students built turtle habitats and wind farms. And in Slovakia, young people imagined a bee sanctuary in Minecraft. During this build, I learned that bees do this thing called swarming. We can live more sustainably, we can treat one another better, and can we all agree that learning should always be fun? Let's build a better world together. Game on! Now it's the big moment. Let's talk to Agnes about the next update. Welcome back, Agnes. Thank you. How's the show felt for you? super good like I think it's a really fun show <laughs> and also of course we've shown so many exciting things but. absolutely I, I mean I'm feeling quite nostalgic since this is number 10 and I have to say I was the seventh employee the first woman on the team and when I see you leading Minecraft I just feel so excited about where we're going <laughs> thank you that was, that was 
was very sweet of you. And of course, we managed that lead it together, but I like uh, I'm like the creative lead, yeah. and I'm yeah I'm I'm super happy about that. But it feels quite surreal because you know I also used used to be a Minecraft player and love this game, and it's it's yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy and lucky to be here. <laughs> yes, I think we all feel that way. And it's so cool having so many people on the team who play and love it and mm. care about it. And like, we all feel like, I mean, we are part of the community too. Yes, we definitely are. And now Agnes, you are going to <laughs> reveal to us what the next update is. Yes. Okay. So the next update is called the wild update. <laughs> the wild update sounds very, very intriguing. So what does it encompass? So the word wild mainly means like two things for us. So the first thing is like beautiful nature. And the second thing is like really scary challenges and adventures. Oh, that sounds awesome. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have some of our gameplay designers come and tell mm. us more about specific things about the wild update because there's these different parts to it. And we have the first one here, which is our deep dark expert, Brandon. Hello. Hi, Brandon. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So we've moved the deep dark into this update. Can you talk to us more about why? Yes, I mean, one of the biggest things about the Deep Dark and the Warden and the Skulk is that it's just expanded, it's gotten bigger, and we've, we really wanted to make sure that we did this right and that we didn't just rush it. Um, that includes even unique loot inside the Deep Dark as well. And yeah, um, we also want to make sure that uh, we... Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's actually look at some of the new things that we have in it right now, which is the ancient cities. That's awesome. I can't wait. Oh, wow. It's like both beautiful and terrifying at the same time. Like I have so many emotions when I look <laughs> at that deep dark biome. Yes, I mean, we really didn't want the deep dark biome to just be, you know, caves or just skulks spread around. We wanted it to add a bit more mystery to it. Um, and, you know, there's this ancient city and what is it doing there? We're not going to tell the players. We're just going to let them go throughout and explore and see what they come to. Um, and there's even this like ancient structure in the middle of every single city and it's got something interesting about it that you're going to have to explore in game it's really cool mm. I, I like it feels like a place you want to explore yes i love that it really deepens the mystery of minecraft like minecraft is all about player stories and deep dark definitely inspires just storytelling i think that's so cool. And so last year you showed us the Skulk sensor, but I know you've been working on it. A little Skulk family? <laughs> a, a, yes. a Skulk family? Like, like, is it that yeah, maybe they're not so cute. <laughs> they're not so friendly, no. Yeah, last year we focused a lot on the Skulk sensor, but since then we've kind of been trying to figure out what do all the different blocks in the Skulk family do. And one of them actually is something called a Skulk catalyst. And the main thing about the Skulk catalyst is it's actually what causes the Skulk to spread. As you can see here, whenever a mob dies, such as a zombie, near the Skulk catalyst, it actually spreads the Skulk underneath it. And the amount is based on how much XP that zombie would have dropped. Wow. So, you know, the deep dark, it's kind of overgrown with all these Skulk blocks, so that means that lots of mobs must have died there. Quite a lot, yes. <laughs> make it less scary. Oh, and as you can see here, when you mine some of the Skulk blo blocks, you actually get enchanting points. 
Yes, and of course, if you still want to get some of the blocks for decoration or something, you can just use a silk touch. And then we have the Skulk Shrieker. <laughs> so when this block is activated, mm -hmm, it's going to give that really scary shriek sound that you hear, heard now. And it also gives this darkness effect, so it's like pulsating darkness. Even see now when you're sneaking and you step on a skulk sensor, even sneaking it will activate. Wow, okay, definitely not a friendly family. No. And I will <laughs> say to our younger viewers, in a in a minute we're gonna show you a clip that's a little scarier. But I just I mean, Brandon, those have so many things that players can do with them. Like yep. what do you imagine them doing? I think the skull catalyst is going to be really interesting because, you know, when you, you could create a mob farm with a, like through the tech community, um, usually when a mob dies, it doesn't drop XP unless you, the player, actually kills it. So with this, you might be able to create some sort of XP farm. Ooh. There's lots of opportunities. Cool. And you can build like experiences for other players. Like imagine building like a haunted mansion or a really dark forest, and then you have the shriekers. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so then you know when players out walking and then they activate the shriek and hear like. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> or you, just, you do that all do around your world and just whenever anyone's visiting well, I'm you. I'm not going to visit your world. <laughs> Shriekers are just <laughs> shrieking. We have a community question for you. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Jean Tom from Germany. And my question is, what was the inspiration behind the Shrieker? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. From the art side, we actually had the inspiration behind the human larynx, which is like the vocal cord or vocal structure or something, just something that represents kind of creating sounds. And from the gameplay perspective, we wanted to make sure that, first of all, the warden spawns in a unique way and also in a way that you can avoid it. So usually you can kind of sneak around and as long as you don't activate the uh, skulk shriekers, then the warden won't come. But if you do make too many noises and the Skulk Shrieker activates too many times, the Warden will come. I'm kind of back to thinking that the Skulk family is very adorable and sweet <laughs> <laughs> after seeing that. Wow, yes. there is a lot there, Brandon. Definitely a lot to unpack. I mean, the first thing is that the Warden actually emerges underground. So that means you know that Wardens are kind of in the deep dark, in the walls, under the floor. And it also has developed a sense of smell. So, of course, you can sneak around and try to be, you know, quiet and not to get detected. But... Unfortunately, the warden's still going to be able to sniff you out and find where you are. And if it sniffs you while you're really close by, then it's going to start noticing you. Wait, so basically the warden is like, smell that? It's happening. And just like going for the Pretty players? much, yes. Oh. It's not going to be fun for you. No, and I love that we're adding that like uh, sneaking gameplay because we haven't really had that before. So, you know, we are in the deep dark, everything's super dark. And you're sneaking, trying to find the treasures, trying to avoid the warden. I think it's something really exciting with that. It's really, really cool. I mean, I think you have definitely upped the terrifying level, Brandon. And I just love how much you've expanded the deep dark to feel it's so, it's so immersive. 
Yes, definitely. It's really amazing. Thank you so much for joining us and and scaring us half to death. No worries. That's my job. <laughs> he, yeah, he's our expert. Like if you want to do something scary, it's like, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Thank you Thank so much, you. Brandon. So Agnes, the deep dark is one part, this sort of very adventurous side of the wild update, which the name is starting to mm -hmm. really become clear after talking to Brandon. And then the other part you said is really this more of that beauty and, you know, the atmosphere of Minecraft. Yes. So we want to like celebrate the wilderness of Minecraft. And one thing we want to focus on is immersion. So when you play Minecraft, we really want you to feel that you're inside the Minecraft world. Actually, like we are now. <laughs> so beautiful. And we also have, want to focus or have focused on biome diversity. So we want to find like a unique identity for different biomes. For example, the birch forest, as you can see in this beautiful concept art. So in the birch forest, we want it to be like light and peaceful and the sun reaches the ground, the trees are taller and the flower, flowers, things like that. It's really beautiful. It looks very Swedish in the birch forest. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's actually a very Swedish forest. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And then you have... so. You want to add more atmosphere to the different biomes, but there's one biome that you want. I mean, I would say you're giving it quite an overhaul. It's getting a lot more in the wild yes, update. Yes, that's true. And that's the swamp. Oh, <laughs> our art team is just so amazing. It's such a beautiful concept art. And as you can see here, the atmosphere is really different from, from the birch forest as well. It really is. It's amazing. So we have another one of our gameplay designers here and our swamp expert, Corey. Welcome, Corey. Hi, Corey. Hey, it's absolutely wild to be here. <laughs> oh, no, Corey. The puns are so quick <laughs> to start. I mean, it's Corey after all. So. <laughs> yeah, it's very on brand. <laughs> So you're going to tell us about all of the, ex I mean, there's a lot of exciting things coming to the swamp. So what are we getting? Yes, there are a lot of awesome things coming. The first of which is the boat with the chest in it. And relaxing. Yes, and especially now, you know, in Kiefs and Kiefs Part 2, we have even wider rivers, so it's easier to travel in water, so it's going to be, like, extra useful. Yeah, and, like, in the aquifers as well. <gasps> yes, so, like, when you go rafting in the caves, you can, like, put your diamonds in the chest in your boat. Oh, it's really, really nice. amazing. And you've been working on what I think now will be my favorite tree in Minecraft. Yes, we are adding the mangrove tree to Minecraft. So as you can see here, this is a propagule, and propagules grow from mangrove trees. They're actually like ready to grow uh, mangrove, mini mangroves growing from the mangrove. And you can see here, the mangrove tree grows propped up on root blocks. Uh, it has vines hanging down from the leaves. The propagules are actually growing underneath the leaves. They actually grow from the leaves themselves. And I really like how the propagules are looking here. And okay, I'm just gonna nerd out on yes, propagules for a minute. Love. Okay, so in real life, the propagules grow, like I said, from the mangrove tree. And then when they fall into the water, or like let's say they fall into water, they can float for up to a year before they plant themselves in the, the like water, under, underneath the water or on land, wherever they happen to land. And mangrove trees themselves are actually amazing for like local ecosystems, fighting climate change for local communities. They're just super trees and I'm really, really excited that we're adding them to Minecraft. That's awesome. And this is the first sapling that you can plant underwater. Yeah, you can plant it underwater and on land as well. That's so cool. When you first showed me the mangroves and you talked about your favorite thing, the propagules, I actually remember playing in mangroves in Florida and we would use them oh. to like write in the, the sand because they're super that's cool. That's adorable. So seeing them yeah. in Minecraft is just so, so exciting. And of course, where there's a new tree, there must be a new wood type. Yes, the mangroves do come with a new wood type. And like always when we add a new tree, we are so happy, like we get so many questions from the community like, will there be a new wood type? <laughs> and, and therefore we're so happy that we were able to add a new wood type for the mangroves. And look at it, I think it's really pretty. And you also don't see like all the blocks here. It's gonna be like a full set for the wood types. It's gonna be like doors and trapdoors and so on. That's 
gorgeous. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so excited about mangroves, but I just need to mention another thing. Because <laughs> we, we decided to go with like really big roots, and I think those are so cool. And we actually prototyped quite a lot back and forth. And it was a bit tricky to decide how the roots should look like, as you see in this picture here. But now I'm so happy that we went with the like multi-block roots. Because, for example, when you like go with the a boat, and then you can go under the mangroves, and I think that adds such a nice wow. feeling to it. Yeah, like in this picture, it's really nice atmosphere. That's I, beautiful. I, I really agree. And like when I was testing, I really loved that feeling of like being underneath it, being yeah. like just this, this huge feeling. And I, I wanted more. I wanted to be surrounded by mangroves. So I was like, hmm, why don't I just make a mangrove swamp biome where I'm completely surrounded by them? So as you can see in this video, walking around, you're just completely surrounded in the mangrove swamp. It's just mangroves as far as the eye can see, just like in real life. And you have all the mangroves propped up on their roots, growing in the water, so you can take your boat underneath like Agnes likes. (laughs) And you're just completely surrounded (laughs) by the awesome beauty of it. It's so beautiful. Oh, and I mean, during the sunset, every time I was testing, I would actually like pause the day-night cycle just to watch the sunset in the mangrove swamp. It was super beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. I noticed that that was not dirt. Good eye, Lydia. (laughs) That was wet dirt, otherwise known as mud. (laughs) That's amazing. So you've actually added mud to do something really cool. Yeah, so we're adding really cool renewability mechanics to mud. The first of which is if you take a dirt block and pour a water bottle on it, then you can get more mud. And then the other one is if you take your mud block and you stick it on top of the dripstone, it will sort of like drip the water out of the mud and eventually dry it out, which turns into clay. So I love the renewable clay. Like I always need more bricks. So perfect. Yeah, your local mason isn't going to be super happy with you though. <laughs> That's actually true. I, I have this one mason, like diamond tier mason in my village and I always trade with them. You're taking so, a villager's you know, job. They <laughs> might be a bit upset now, but still <laughs> renewable clay. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And you're also using mud to make a new block. Yes, we're also adding mud bricks. So mud bricks are really, really exciting like building block. And as you can see here, the, the brick texture is actually different than the other stone bricks that we have in the game. So they're sort of smaller, more compact, but it is really cool like to build with. It matches a lot of different block sets, and I, I'm really excited to build with them. I just love the look of them. They're awesome. So beautiful. We have a creator question for the two of you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited they asked this question because I really wanted to answer it. So the main reason that I wanted to add mud bricks to the game is that I really wanted people to feel like, they're, okay, all around the world, there are houses built out of mud bricks. So many people around the, the world have houses, buildings using mud bricks. And I really wanted people who are playing Minecraft to feel like they could build their home and feel like they're at home in Minecraft. So I'm really glad we got to add them for that mm. reason. Amazing. Yes, I mean, it's, it's so important for us that like, everyone feels equally welcome when playing Minecraft. Oh, that is, that is absolutely amazing. Now, so we have like amazing new trees. We have mud everywhere. <laughs> we definitely need something very cute. Yes. Well, very cute and quite derpy because we're adding frogs. That's the perfect description of them. <laughs> the croaking is amazing. And did you see the one that jumped like backwards? <laughs> one fell in the water. Silly frogs. Yes. And they do like they do love to jump around, and especially on lily pads, and actually also on big drip leaves because I mean the big drip leaves kind of look like lily pads. But the funny thing with that is then when they jump on top of the big drip leaves, it's gonna tilt and then they fall down. One of them did. It just. <laughs> Maybe it's a, like, frog slide. No. Oh. <laughs> and you're adding another little, little tiny creature Itty to bitty. this update. <laughs> yes, the fireflies. So you can see them roaming around, adding a lot of ambience to the swamp, making it feel just nice and cozy at night. But really, my favorite part of them is just making the world come to life, like feeling like there is life going on all around you. And... <gasps> 
Oh yeah, also they're <laughs> frog food. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. They're frog food. <laughs> Poor fireflies. Yes. Yeah, but look how happy the frog is. Yeah, and That's they're beautiful true. frog food. So you mm. can both enjoy them in the atmosphere and the frogs get to eat. So that's, you know. Everybody true. wins. <laughs> now, we're calling them fireflies. But Corey, is that what you called them growing up? Actually, no. We called them lightning bugs. I did too. And in Swedish, it's... It's eldflugor, and that actually literally translates to fireflies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's very interesting. It became like a lot of people talking about what you called it growing up. But we're really excited to have fireflies or lightning bugs in the game. I want to know more about baby frogs. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you know, all baby mobs in Minecraft are just like tiny versions of the grown-ups, but with frogs, we're actually adding tadpoles. Once again, you deliver on the promise of cute and derpy with the tadpoles. We do. <laughs> yes, and you can pick them up in a bucket. Yes, and that's actually extra helpful for the tadpoles because we have frog variants and when a tadpole grows up, it will pick a variant depending on the temperature in the biome it grows up in. So for example, if it grows up in a really cold place, it's going to turn into a snowy frog. Yeah, as you can see here. So the frogs have kind of like two main systems. One is the tadpole system and the other one is the cold-blooded system. So the frogs are like the first cold-blooded animal in Minecraft. And in real life, there actually are frog variants that pick a color uh, depending on, like, or they adapt <laughs> their color <laughs> depending on temperature. And we wanted to have that in Minecraft, we wanted to like Minecraftify it. So therefore the tadpole's gonna pick a variant instead depending on, on the temperature. That's so cool. And, and we, there are three variants. Yes, it's gonna be three okay, variants. Okay, so we've seen two. What's the third one? The third one is the tropical frog. Yes. So let's say you were venturing out into the desert or the jungle and you take your, your tadpole with you. And if it grows up there, it'll turn into a lovely tropical frog. And I, what I really love about the tropical frogs is how just relaxed they look. And they're like blending into the sand almost. They're just so relaxed, just chilling there. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think there was a reason that they were yes, there, that Yes, there is a reason that they are white. So like, I was reading a lot about frogs. Always when we had something new, we read up a lot. It's super fun because we can be really geeky. <laughs> and then I learned about the real life frog that's called gray foam nest tree frog and lives, for example, in Angola, Botswana and Kenya. And that frog can actually turn almost white to avoid overheating. So that's like the inspiration for the tropical frog in I Minecraft. I love all three of them. And you didn't... so. You have these different color variations, but you also have something else special about the frogs. Yes, so each frog variant is going to have something unique that will be useful for the players. But we actually don't even know what that is yet because we are working on the frogs right now. That is so cool. So Corey, which frog is your favorite? Oh, it's got to be the snowy frog. They look so cozy. Ooh, Aww. I'm I'm tropical frog. I'm very interested to see which one the community loves yes, the most. I just or I love mean, them all. all of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for joining us, Corey, and uh, taking us into a deep dive of all really cool swamp things. Yeah, yeah happy Thank to be here. Thank you, Corey. Thank of you, course. Corey. I'm just gonna hop on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Corey. So many plans. <laughs> I like that though. This is quite an awesome update. And I mean, I really see the name for the wild update. You get a bit of everything in it. Yes, and I love the contrast. Yeah, as you can see in this pretty concept art, it's really like that beautiful nature and the super terrifying deep dark. And I love that contrast between these two things. It's absolutely amazing. Well, we're getting close to the end of the show. And as always, the time has flown by. And a lot has happened during this show. So let's look back at some of the biggest announcements and then we will reveal the winning mob. <gasps>
Now it's time to see what mob you chose to add to the game. Uh, hey, Jens, do you have the results? Yes, I have them right here in my chest. <gasps> wow. Very exciting. You really came in style. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. That looked really comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now it's time to announce the winner. Okay, and the winner is the LA. Wow. Yes, I'm super happy about that. It's, it's a lovely, lovely mob. That is so, so exciting. So Agnes, when can everyone expect the LA? So the LA will be included in the Wild Update and it's going to be released next year. Next year, the Wild Update with the LA? I can't wait. Thank you all so much for joining us. Minecraft wouldn't be what it is today without all of you from all of us at Mojang Studios. Thank you so much. Bye.